Hello. I've been asked to look at this. It's a Sony DVD and hard disk recorder and it's working just fine. The issue is that the owner has lots of recordings on here that they want to get off. They were originally recorded from VHSC tapes. Now it would have been far better if I could run those VHSC tapes afresh on a Super VHS video recorder with digital time based corrector and do high quality computer captures from those. But unfortunately, she's thrown them away over the years. So we have recordings just on here. Now, as it works, we do have the option of dubbing all the material onto DVDs and then onto computer. Uh, but that's a bit clunky. We might have to do it that way, but there could be quality loss and it could take a long time. Another option would be to plug the output of this into the video capture device and capture the files that way. And that is a possible way of doing it, but it's not a pure digital route. I'm wondering if we can take the hard disk out of this and recover the data from the hard disk. But the hard disk will be a weird format for sure. So that may or may not be possible. Right, let's start by hooking this thing up and see how many recordings it's got so we've got some idea what we're up against. A look around the back shows us it's uh, quite well equipped, as is common with later model uh, DVD recorders. It has HDMI out, which is always a plus, digital out for connecting to your uh, uh, home sound system, uh, as well as SCART, uh, YUV, composite and aerial connections, uh, including digital connections for uh, DVB. So that's quite well equipped actually as they go. Okay I've just switched the machine on you can hear the hard disk spinning up. Looking at the front we have a USB socket I'm sure that's not going to be any help to us. DV but it says DV in if only that been DV out that would have been useful but no so there's nothing on the front that's going to help us. Oh I press play and something's happened seems to be switched off. Maybe I pressed more buttons than I thought. Title list? Ah, here we go. Okay, so we have numbered recordings on here and there are... how many? 43 recordings. So I don't particularly fancy the idea of dubbing them all across. It does give you the capacity, it says 0.1 gig, 0.3 gig, so they're not huge files. Alright, so let's switch it off and see what kind of hard disk is inside here. Somewhat unusual screws holding it together. So I need to be careful because nothing I do must be destructive as the uh, if we can't capture the material directly from the hard disk we need to take one of the other routes okay it's a SATA drive 250 gigabytes so it's pretty tiny really Okay, well, I'm going to put that into a fairly standard hard disk caddy and I'm going to start up some software. I think ISOBuster is worth a try. Let's give it a go. Right, there's the hard disk. It's model 3250820AS from Seagate and I'm going to pop it into this docking station. I find this is really helpful, this sort of thing. Switch that on. Of course, it won't be assigned a letter under Windows, it won't be recognized by Windows, but hopefully we can get some software that will recognize it. If we go to Windows 10 Computer Management, uh, we can see the 250 gigabyte drive appears as a healthy active partition, but of course uh, it's not formatted in any way that Windows can understand. Uh, so you don't see it under this PC. Now, initially I'm starting up an old version of IsoBuster version 3.6 licensed, which uh, was able to extract the data both as uh, VOB and MP3 files. Uh, but better though, I found, was uh, you do a right click and select the option to extract but filter only MPEG files. And this gives us a large quantity of MPEG2 files. 
Uh, now, though there's a lot and there's no file names that mean an awful lot, uh, it includes all the original files that were on the hard disk, so not necessarily just the one the customer wants. It also includes all the ones that they've already deleted from the, the menu of the Sony DVD recorder. So it's got everything we want, but possibly rather a lot as well. Uh, and a couple of the files are a bit mixed up, so they've got the material they want, but also different videos kind of mixed in at the end, even of different resolution. You wouldn't believe you could get a video file with two different resolutions in it. So it's obviously slightly corrupted. So that'll take a little bit of tidying up. Uh, but a lot has improved with ISO Buster since version 3.6 I was running there. Uh, so uh, I reached out to uh, Peter at ISO Buster and he's let us do the extraction again using ISO Buster Pro version 5.2 Enterprise Registered Edition. So that's the uh, top of the range version. Uh, now that's allowed us to extract all the files with the original file names. So it's much tidier. We can see what we've got and throw away the material that the customer doesn't want. Uh, and I hope we also don't get that mixed up problem. Now uh, I'll provide information below on all the pricing structure for the different versions of IsoBuster. There's a free version, there's personal, there's business and enterprise, and they all have uh, different uh, features and facilities. So after some hours of processing, we've now extracted all the data from the hard disk and have a large quantity of MPEG-2 files. Uh, but there's going to be some junk in there, so uh, let's tidy it up a bit, see if we can sanitize the data a bit before we hand it over to the customer. Right, here's a good trick with uh, Windows to see if your video files are valid uh, is to go to more and select in details length and if you have files here with no length then they are to some extent corrupted. They may still play in VLC player but they are corrupted in some way. So all these files are corrupted junk and I think we can safely delete those. So these all been extracted as MPEG-2 files, same format as DVD. And that's fine for playback on VLC player, but not everything will accept them. Some TVs won't accept uh, MPEG-2 files, uh, and devices that don't have VLC player installed generally won't. So it would be nice to also provide MPEG-4 files. Even though the recoding is going to reduce quality a bit, it will make them a lot more compatible. So I'd like to uh, supply those as well. I'll use a Freemake Video Converter. I have a paid version of that. And you can just drop all the files in, tell it the resolution you want for output, and launch it, and it'll come back a little bit later with MPEG-4 files. Now, that can be a bit hazardous if you are extracting MPEG-2 files from DVDs, because if there are any imperfections in the DVD, scratches or uh, failure of the layers, the, the dyes in the layers of the DVD, then you can finish up with corrupted MPEG-4 files and a common problem is lip sync errors, the picture and sound start to drift apart. But these files, at least the ones that are valid video files with known good running times, shouldn't suffer from that, so we shouldn't have any lip sync errors or other issues. Everything on MPEG-4 should play as well as MPEG-2. Well, I hope you've learned something uh, from this little bit of work on this Sony uh, hard disk and DVD recorder. And of course, the principles will apply to many other brands and models of DVD recorder, hard disk recorder as well. I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.